The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks and sandwiches and in hot dishes. And hidden in that swell cheese flavor are important nutrients from milk. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta, the cheese food of Kraft quality. It's seldom you find the great Gildersleeve sitting in a movie, unless there's an added attraction. This evening, the added attraction is sitting in the seat right next to him. Oh, uh, comfy Adeline. Oh, yes, and we're just in time. It's starting. If the picture gets too exciting, Adeline, you can hold my hand. But, Throckmorton, this is a romantic picture. Oh? Well, then I'll hold your hand. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Nice title. Love is love. I know you'll just adore Anthony Dane. Anthony Dane? Who's he? Who's Anthony Dane? Oh, Throckmorton. I just love period movies, don't you? Where they wear costumes and all. Well, I haven't been to any where they didn't. <laughs> Which one's Anthony? He hasn't come in yet. I bet that's him. Oh, yes, that's him. Psst, wearing silk stockings. Doesn't Anthony walk gracefully? Look how he carries those broad shoulders. I don't know how he does it on those spindly legs. <laughs> Tomorrow, I sail with the Queen's fleet for the new world. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> Excuse me, Adeline. I'll get some popcorn. scene that I've been waiting for, Throckmorton. Anthony's soliloquy about love in the crow's nest. Huh? Excuse me, I'll get some more popcorn. It seems a little crooked. My beloved, I'm back. You came back, my lord. You came back after three long years. Three long years. Mm, three very long years. <laughs> Shh. I had to come back to hold you again like this because love is love. Oh, my goodness. Mercy, what a man. Yes, come along, Adeline. It's over. It's all over. All right, but I could sit here all night. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me, miss. Madam. Well, but we can go home and talk about it, and I'll make some coffee. Yeah, let's walk by the office first, huh? Pick up some cigars. I chewed all I had to keep awake. 
Can't you get some at Mr. Peavy's? I'd love a soda. It's pretty late, Adeline. Everything's closed now, and I'm too tired to go shopping around. Well, if you're so tired, Throckmorton, let's call a taxi. Taxi? I can't sit down anymore. It's real long years. <laughs> No, Throckmorton, I really shouldn't be coming up to a man's office at this hour. Why not? man has to have cigars. Well, if the Queen's attendant went to the fountain with Anthony on chaperone, I guess I can go to the water department with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, come to think of it, I've never really shown you around here, have I, Adeline? No, you haven't. Wasn't Anthony wonderful? So tender with women and so rough with the Indians. Uh, yes. Well, here's where I run the water department that you've heard so much about, Adeline. That's my executive type chair behind the desk. And there's the. Doc Morton, do you think your hair will get that distinguished steel gray at the temples? Huh? Like Anthony Danes did after three years in the New World. I've been in the New World quite a while and it hasn't turned gray yet. <laughs> But it will, Adeline, if you don't stop talking about Anthony, the Great Dane. Oh, I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I have been neglecting you, haven't I? That's all right. I'll get my cigars out of the drawer and we'll go home. Oh, now, Throckmorton, don't be so sensitive. Tell me about your office. No, no, it's not very interesting anyway. Let's go home. Gracious, what are all these important-looking papers? Just some reports. Bessie and I have to get to the mayor early in the morning. Let's go. Bessie? My secretary. You know, I think I'm a little jealous of your secretary, Throckmorton, getting to spend all day with you. I think I'd like to trade places with her. Oh? Well, you'd probably be more efficient, but I don't think we'd get much work done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Well, let's try it anyway. I'll play on your secretary. Play? But Adeline... Oh, be fun, Throckmorton. It's getting late. Well, you sit at your desk now, and I'll help you get out your report to the mayor. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, where does your secretary usually sit? Sit? Well, uh, Bessie always sits in that chair, but in your case, every, every, every. <laughs> Oh, you. <laughs> What's that? Sounds like somebody came in. Oh, dear. Is that you, Gildersleeve? Me? Oh, uh, hello there, Mayor Terwilliger. Gildersleeve, I saw a light, and I wondered who'd be up here at this hour. Well, it's just me and Miss Fairchild. This is our mayor, Miss Fairchild, Mayor Terwilliger. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Gildersleeve, what's going on here? Huh? No, Mr. Mayor. You're a city official, and this is the city hall, and it's nearly midnight. Start explaining. Explaining? Well, it's nothing to get upset about, Mr. Mayor. We were um, um, just working on your report. My report? Weren't we, Ad uh, Miss Fairchild? Well, yes, we were. Oh, well, then I apologize, Gildersleeve. I didn't suspect you'd be working late. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I didn't even know you had a new secretary. New secretary? Uh, oh, yes, yes. New secretary. Well, <laughs> really? Uh, now, Miss Fairchild, never interrupt the mayor. That's all right. I think you've done the right thing for once, Gildersleeve, getting rid of your old secretary. What? There have been lots of mistakes coming out of your office, and I knew you couldn't be making all of them. Well, I try to do my part. <laughs> what? I mean, uh, uh, Bessie makes a few mistakes, but she's not a bad secretary. Nonsense, Gildersleeve. She was grossly incompetent. You know it. But I know you hated to let her go. But an executive has to be hard at times for the good of the city. Oh, yes, for the good of the city. Why, I wouldn't even hesitate to fire you, Gildersleeve, for the good of the city. Oh, yeah, well, we wouldn't want that to happen. But may it work? Oh, would be, Miss Fairchild. <laughs> Well, I'll say good night now and stop by in the morning when you're not so busy. In the morning? I always like to get acquainted with our new employees. Don't work too late. Good night. Oh, no, we won't work. Good night. You see, I told you this would be fun. <laughs> How do I get out of this? <laughs> Again? Gosh, Yonk, what are you doing up so early? Good morning, Leroy. Marjorie. Okay, you are up early. Early? Uh, Not so early. Bertie, breakfast. I'm in a little hurry. That you, Mr. Gillespie? You're up early. Oh, my goodness. You see, you are up early. 
What's up, Unc? Leroy, I just have to get down to my office and take care of a few things. Each approved. You want some of the paper? Leroy has the comics. No time for the paper. I'll read the comics to you, Unc. Oh? Wow, Biff, Zoe, take that <laughs> to be continued. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Leroy, I have a big enough headache without that machine gun stuff. Your eyes do look tired, Unc. Didn't you sleep well? No. Bertie, let's hustle it up. <laughs> what was that? Oh, juice. <laughs> what did you and Miss Fairchild do last night, Anki? Well, uh, we went to the movies. To the movies? Not you. What'd you see? Did you see Wolf Call? Same thing, practically. Love is love. <laughs> Not love is love with Anthony Dane. Anthony Dane, what a drip. Uh, oh, Anki, didn't he just thrill you? Uh, no, I can't say that he did. He's a drip. He is not. Do you just like him because all he does is make love, love, love? Leave him. <laughs> Don't try to be smart. He's a drip. Anki, make him stop. Now, Leroy, let's not have an argument. He can't help it if he's a drip. Anki! Huh? <laughs> Mr. Gill, please. You sneaked up on me this morning. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Let me know next time you want it early, and I'll have it ready for you. Anytime you want it early. Now, Bertie, let's not make a big thing of this. There's nothing so unusual about me getting to the office early. Ah! Leroy. <laughs> All you've got to do is let Bertie know when you want breakfast early, and she'll have it ready. Anytime you want it early. Oh, fine, Bertie. I heard you come in so late last night, I didn't think you wanted early. How was that a no? That's all right, Bertie. But all you got to do is let me know any time you want it early. Yes, Bertie. I'm up anyway, and all you got to do is let me know any time you want it early. Ye <laughs> gods, I'll never get up early again, not even to save my job. <laughs> Adeline thought last night was all a big joke. Why did I ever let her play secretary? Now, if I don't get Bessie out of here before the mayor shows up... She's not here yet. Nine o'clock. What a secretary. Eh, probably the mayor's right. Maybe I should fire Bessie. No, I haven't the heart. She'd never get a job anywhere else. Uh, besides, it was my fault. No, it was the mayor's fault for snooping around. And I like this chair. Where is that Bessie? Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're up early. Bessie, where have you been? It's 30 seconds after nine. I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd have been here earlier, but I stopped outside the door to pick up the mail. Here it is. Oh. A travel circular. Travel circular? Say, I could take a trip. What'd you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, wait a minute. Bessie, why don't you take a trip? Me? I'm going to on my vacation. I've been dying to see the Grand Canyon. Well, don't take off your hat. Go see it now. <laughs> the Grand Canyon's wonderful this time of year. Leave this morning, Bessie. You've been working entirely too hard. Goodbye. Have a good time. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mr. Gildersleeve, are you feeling all right? No, but I'll feel better if you go on a vacation. <laughs> It'll give me time to straighten out things around here. Hasn't my work been satisfactory? Let's not go into that, Bessie. Just take your vacation immediately. But, Mr. Gildersleeve... Please, Bessie, don't argue. Vacate. Mr. Gildersleeve, this isn't your nice way of telling me I'm through, is it? No, Bessie. When you come back, everything will be the same. Oh, I'm so glad. Because a terrible thing happened to my girlfriend when she went on vacation. Yes, yes. When she came back, her boss had been fired. Mm, get going, Bessie. <laughs> Here, I'll open the door. Come on. Zeke. It's the mayor. Quick, Bessie, hide in the broom closet. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, what about the Grand Canyon? Shh, don't argue, Bessie. The Grand Canyon will wait. It always has. Hop in there. But? Don't listen to a word we say. Gildersleeve, you here? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> Good morning, Mayor Tulliger. Good morning, Commissioner. And Judge, <laughs> what are you doing here? I just had to come over, Gildy. The mayor tells me you have a new secretary. Yes, where is she, Gildersleeve? Uh, well, she's in the broom closet. I mean, uh... <laughs> I mean the Grand Canyon. Oh. <laughs> that is, she's out at the moment. <laughs> oh. She sounds like a busy little girl. Yeah, oh, she is. Uh, we were just discussing vacations, that's why I, I mentioned... I hear she's very attractive, Gilly. A blonde. A blonde. Yes, yes. I'm sorry she isn't here, but I must get to my office. Tell Miss... Uh, what's her name, Gilsley? Well, let me... Fairchild, I... wasn't that it? Not Adeline Fairchild. Your secretary? <laughs> <laughs> 
Shut up, you old goat. What, please? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Mayor. Drop in again sometime. Thank you, Gildersleeve. In fact, I'll drop back right after lunch at one o'clock. One o'clock? The girl's new. I think I should familiarize her with municipal operations. Well, she's been familiar. I mean, she, she might be out to lunch at one o'clock. Well, have her here, Gildersleeve. If she doesn't mind working until midnight, she won't mind being in the office at one o'clock. <laughs> well, Gildy, this is a juicy bit of gossip. It seems the water commissioner has a skeleton in his closet. I have not. Come out of the closet, Bessie. <laughs> what? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. No, I'm not, Bessie. Let me explain. I'm going home. Great idea, Bessie. Stay home till I call you. And stop crying. Yes, stop crying, Bessie, because if you heard everything, he doesn't dare fire you ever. <laughs> oh, I think I'll go to the Grand Canyon and jump in. <laughs> Just between us, Gildersleeve isn't going to jump in. He'll be right back. If the folks at your house go for late evening snacks, you naturally welcome ideas for tasty yet easy-to-digest sandwich fixings. Kraft's nutritious cheese food Velveeta is a natural for such light bedtime suppers. Its rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor hits the spot at any hour. And you can let the folks slice its golden goodness thick, for Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself. And it's wonderfully nutritious, too. But Velveeta is more than just a snack time treat. It's a boon for main dishes, too. For instance, rich, satin-smooth Velveeta sauce adds a tantalizing glow to leftovers, seafood, vegetables, and egg dishes. And to make that sauce is as easy as ABC. Simply melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Then stir in one-fourth cup of milk and season to taste. There you have it. A lickin' good cheese sauce that makes the simplest dish extra appetizing. Get in several packages of Velveeta tomorrow, or buy the big economical two-pound loaf. For top flavor, for top cooking quality, for fine food value, get genuine Velveeta, the cheese food of famous craft quality. Well, it's been a rough day for the water commissioner, and it's getting rougher. The great man has sent Bessie home until he figures out his secretary problems, and he's working on them right now, under a hot towel in Floyd's barber shop. Hmm. I could have Bessie dye her hair blonde like I like. The mayor would see through that. What you mumbling about, Commish? Speak up. I'm getting lonesome. (sighs) Just thinking, Floyd. I'll say you are. Got something on your mind, ain't you? How do you know? Barber works pretty close to the brain. He can tell. Hey, let me feel. Yep. You can feel the wheels going around. The pocket, the pocket, the pocket, the pocket. All right, Floyd. <laughs> I happen to have a headache. Let's stop the clowning. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Just making conversation. Part of the service. All the service I want is a shave, Floyd, and hurry it up. Okay. But you ought to let me do something about them eyes, Commissioner. Looks like you've been working them pretty late nights. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Here, let me drop a little murine in them. Well, it might feel pretty good. Open the left one. Hmm? There you are. Oh, Floyd, don't drop them from so high. <laughs> okay. Right eye, Commish. That's it. Well, if you're going to drop it, drop it. Keep it open. Don't flinch. It is open. Okay. Bombs away. Oh, not the whole bottle, Floyd. Huh? Well, that one was a little worse. Yeah. Um... How'd they get in such bad shape, Kamish? Huh? Personally, I wouldn't stand for it, working day and night like you do down at the office. What's this, Floyd? Why, I even hear it takes two secretaries to keep up with you. What? One for during the day and one at night. <laughs> I see Hooker has been here. I'll get this straight, Floyd. I have only one secretary, and that's Bessie. Oh, yeah? And who was that the mayor caught you with up at the water department last night? A mermaid from your reservoir? <laughs> Floyd, Miss Fairchild, and I stopped by my office to get some cigars after a movie. That's the truth. Huh? Huh? No, Floyd. Couldn't you feed the mayor a better story than that, Commish? Like you was waiting for a streetcar? It's all a horrible misunderstanding, Floyd. 
The mayor assumed Adeline was my new secretary, and now he's coming back at one o'clock to have a talk with her. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do, Commish? What would you do, Floyd? I'd hire her. What? Now, I'd like to have a classy dame like Miss Fairchild around here to sharpen scissors and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly, Floyd. I can't let Bessie go. Besides, Adeline knows nothing about stenographic work. So what? Put her on the city payroll. What do you got to lose? Only my job, that's all. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey. Hey, why don't you have her come down at one o'clock and save your hide and then let her go? No, Floyd. That's ridiculous. Get me out of here. Why not? That would be gross misrepresentation. Not only that, it would be dishonest and unethical, and I won't do it. <laughs> Adeline doesn't answer. Well, I'm kind of glad. I'd hate to be dishonest and unethical like that Floyd. Oh, hello, PB. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> How are things with you today? I have a splitting headache. Oh? Everything's been going wrong today, Peavy, from the time I got up this morning. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I woke up quite pleasantly this morning, the scent of lilacs coming in through the window. I didn't sleep well. I didn't feel like eating breakfast. I'm very fond of lilacs. Everything went wrong at the office. And so is Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> what? Fond of lilacs. Oh, my goodness, Peavy, we're not talking about lilacs. I am. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and talk about them. I've been talking about them. <laughs> Peavy, I came in here with a headache, and it's getting no better fast. Well, that's too bad, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why didn't you say so? I did. <laughs> but you were too busy talking about lilacs. Well, I happen to like lilacs. Yes, yes. And so did Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> So you told me. Give me an aspirin, Peavy, and a glass of water. Uh, make it two aspirin. My, you are upset. You'd be upset too, Peavy, if you had my troubles. You're lucky you don't have the mayor to contend with. Yeah, you're right there, Mr. Gillespie. You bet. You're lucky you never have secretary trouble. No, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little envious when I hear about you fellows and your secretary. Oh? Huh? What have you heard, Peavy? Well, druggists don't repeat everything they hear, Mr. Gildersleeve. Code of ethics, you know. Code of ethics. Well, no matter what you heard, I can explain it. You don't have to explain anything to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. The judge has been in here telling about the trouble I'm in, hasn't he? Well, I can't say that he has. He has, Peavy, and you know it. Yes, I know it, but I can't say it. <laughs> Code of ethics, you know. Code of ethics, yeah. I don't care what you heard, Peavy. The only thing I'm worried about is what I'm going to tell the mayor at one o'clock. You care for another aspirin? No. It's too big a problem for aspirin. Peavy, I respect your opinions. What do you think I should do? Mm, well, that's the question. There's an old saying, he who dances must pay the fiddler. But, Peavy, there's been no dancing and no fiddling. Pretty sound advice. And then there's another one. He who plays with fire. Oh, I give up. Don't you want to hear the rest of it? I know the rest of it. I've read your almanac. What? So long, poor Richard. Thanks for the act. <laughs> All that advice, and he didn't buy a thing. I think he'll take an aspirin myself. <laughs> Judge, what do you mean by spreading this stuff all over town? Now, now, Gildy, calm down. You wouldn't be in any trouble at all if you had told the mayor the truth last night when you should have. Well, I tried to, but he gave me such a good excuse I couldn't pass it up. Uh -huh. Now then, my advice to you, Gildy, is to go back and tell the mayor exactly what happened. That you stepped up to the office for a cigar after the show. But you know the mayor. He's very excitable, Judge. He's liable to fire me right on the spot. Well, you'll have to take that chance. And if you really want to make an impression... Don't wait for the mayor to come to you. You go to him. What? March right into his office like a little soldier and say your piece. Beard the lion in his den. Yeah, I don't like the way you put a judge, but I'll do it. Beard 
the lion in his den. Wonder if the lion's been fed. <laughs> well. Hey, good afternoon. Is the lion, is the mayor in? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, come in. Thank you. Laryngitis, Mr. Oh, Gildersleeve? No, no, I don't think so. Although it has been a little damp in the water department. <laughs> <laughs> Is the mayor in? I expect him back shortly. He went to lunch a little late. The mayor was very busy this morning, cleaning house. Cleaning house? He's on quite a rampage. I'm afraid we're losing some of our personnel. Who? Oh? He's due at your office at one o'clock. Well, yes, but I... Well, Gildersleeve, there you are. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, here I am. Well, it saves me the trouble of going to your office to tell you what I have to say. Well, I... I've found out a few things since I talked to you last. You have? Well, if it has anything to do with my new secretary... It has everything to do with your new secretary. And, Gildersleeve, this calls for a change in the water department. <laughs> I will not tolerate people who are undependable, frivolous, and who shirk their responsibilities. That's me. Now then... About this new blonde secretary of yours, this uh, Miss Fairchild. Yes? On the way back from lunch, you know what I discovered. <laughs> she was going into a movie on city time. To a movie? Some ridiculous picture called Love is Love. Gildersleeve, you have to let her go. Fire her. Fire her? Well, if you say so, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Gildersleeve? Nothing, nothing. Good old Anthony Dane. <laughs> <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Do you know how to transform a little leftover meat into a main dish with real prestige? You do it with Kraft smooth-melting cheese food, Velveeta. Simply melt Velveeta for a wonderful cheese sauce. Then pour it generously over leftover ham, chicken, or veal and serve on toast or in patty shells. What a sparkling, flavorful way to make your meat dollars go further. Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor gives sandwiches an air of importance, too. Serve Velveeta plain or melted in a tempting golden hot sandwich. Any way you serve Velveeta, it helps apply high-quality complete protein and other valuable milk nutrients. Get Velveeta in a big economical two-pound loaf so you'll have plenty for snacks, sandwiches, and main dishes. Ye gods, Bessie, I got your job back for you. Now stop daydreaming. Let's get on with the work. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was just thinking about my vacation at the Grand Canyon. Vacation's coming in August, Bessie. Let's buckle down. Here it is, nearly five o'clock. We'll never get these reports to the mayor. Mr. Gildersleeve, may I make a suggestion? What is it, Bessie? Why don't we come back tonight and work? No, no, not that. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Neeson. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. Uh, excuse me a second, John. I'd just like to remind everyone that United States government security bonds are a mighty good investment, both for our country's future and for your future. You get $4 back for every three you put in. Folks, buy those bonds regularly. Thank you, Hal. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. And me too. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. A complete dinner main dish cooked in just seven minutes. Grandmother would have said it couldn't be done. But every package of Kraft Dinner gives you both ingredients for a macaroni and cheese dish that's hearty and delicious. There's the special Kraft Dinner macaroni that cooks fluffy, light, and tender in just seven minutes. And there's golden Kraft grated that you stir in for a grand cheddar cheese flavor. What's more, Kraft Dinner costs only a few cents a serving. So for quick, economical macaroni and cheese dishes with a distinctive goodness, get Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.